Hello everybody, I'm so sorry for the delay in posting this video, I know it's been nearly a month since I said it would be next week. Um, as you know I've just moved house and I've been getting everything set up and everything's been a bit crazy at the moment because my work has kind of switched galleries so I've been sorting all that out as well. So I've found some time today and I'm going to get on with Granny Squares so we're going to have loads of fun, yay! Okay so today I'll be using Starcraft Special Double Knit again. Great acrylic wool, really kind of, it's got a bit of a balance in it, so it's quite easy to crochet with. I uh, definitely recommend it. And I'll also be using a Clover Soft Touch 5mm hook. Now, I know usually you should use 4mm with um, double knit, but just for the sake of teaching and for it to be a bit looser, I'm going to use the 5mm. Okay. So, you're going to make your slip knot, like we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. And make it nice and tight on your hook. So granny squares are really great, you can use them for loads of different projects um, and basically it's just working in the round as well so while you can work in the round in a granny square you can then transfer that onto other different projects as well so that's quite cool. So what I'm going to do is we're going to chain four. Hopefully that should be a bit more in focus for you now. So chain four now what you're going to do, is you're going to get your hook and you're going to go back into your very first chain. So just push through it, okay, yarn and pull it back through and then back through that first loop as well. So now you should only have one loop on your hook and a really teeny weeny tiny teeny little circle here. Um, so if you just push your hook through the middle of it you'll find that circle. It's really hard to see in this wall but I promise you it's there. So you can see on my hook I kind of have like a little ring around it now. So you don't need to do that, that's just to help you find the hole. So what you're going to do now, is you're going to chain three again. Now the reason we're chaining three is because we're kind of going up a level. That's the wording that I use and I think it really helped me. So when I say chain three to go up a level, you'll see what I mean. So now, you're going to yarn over, go through the loop in the middle, pull back, pull through two, pull through two. So that's a double crochet, or in English, a triple crochet. So you're going to do another one of those. Now normally, you're going to be doing three double crochets, but this, on your first one, you're only going to do two, because this first chain three actually counts. You see how it kind of looks like the other two? So you only do two. And now you're going to do a corner, let me just get some more wool. So now you're going to do a corner. So when you do a corner, you one two, three, you chain three. And then again, yarn over, pull through, pull back, pull through two, pull through two. You do that three times because you only work in blocks of three on a granny square. And then what do you know? Come to another corner. So again, we chain three. Yarn over, push through, pull back, pull through two, pull through two. All, gran all granny squares, double crochets, in threes. Easy peasy. Now this is really good um, because it uses up any wool that you've got left. Like I'm going through this wool quite quickly. Okay, so one, two, three. And then if you've not noticed, this hole in the middle has kind of got bigger now I've worked into it, so it's really obvious where I'm going. So I go in. One. Woo. Two. Ooh, and three. It's really hard to crochet when looking through a camera lens. Okay, so now we're on our final corner. You can see that I just need to make a corner to get to here. So again, one, two, three. And then, what you can do if you're not comfortable, is just go through this gap here. I wouldn't advise it, but if you're struggling to get through what I'm going to show you now. So on top of here, you can see you've got chain three. What you need to do is that the last chain that you chained go through the V in it. So you see how I've gone through the V? And then slip stitch, so pull through, and then pull through the loop that was already on your hook. And ta-da. And you can kind of like squidge it up a bit. And you put your first round of your gunny square. And that's really easy. Okay? So I'm gonna do one more round to show you about in-between blocks. And then I think we're good to change colours. So, 
What we need to, to do first is you need to turn your work because you're always working clockwise. Oh no, anti-clockwise. You're always working anti-clockwise. So what you're doing first is you're chaining three because you're going up a level or out around. So on your corners, these are once you've done your first round, it's different on corners. So you're chaining three and don't forget that that counts as your first one. What you can also do in this is you, you can see how that's kind of directly above there. What I like to do is I like to slip stitch into the gap. And what that means is when you chain the three, it's coming from the gap, not from the block below, which I think gives a nicer effect. Okay, so you've chained your three, and don't forget that when you do your first chain three, you don't need to do three double crochets, you only need to do two. So, you do your two into the corner gap, but you somehow need to make it into a corner again. So what you need to do is you need to chain three, and then do another three double crochets into the corner. So it seems like, I don't know, it's like adding an extra corner on, almost. So you see? And now we're going to travel over this block here, because we're going to go over it. So some people don't chain any, some people chain two, some people chain three, I'm going to chain two, okay? So we chain two, we yarn over, and then we go to the next corner, we completely skip that block, because those chain two are what we use to travel across it. Okay, so yarn over, into, into the corner, and then three double crochets. And then we're going to chain three because we're making another corner. And then you guessed it, three double crochets. Get some more. Okay. So you can now see that it's kind of looking a little bit more like a granny square. So again, we chain two because we're traveling across. And then three double crochets, chain three, and three double crochets again. It's so easy, this pattern. I mean, I think it'll take maybe a couple of goes and you'll just get it. And so, again, we've done our corner, and we're now going to have to travel over this block here. So we chain two. And then one, two, three, chain three and three double crochets. So the only time it's not three is when you're traveling between the blocks. The rest of the time it's three. Three, 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 and then a two. And then again, what we're going to do is remember this chain here? When you chain three and traveled upwards, that last three that you did, that last chain of the three that you did, you're going to put your hook through and get the two front loops. So there should be two front loops on your hook. And let me see if I can do this. And one back loop. So two front, one back. You get your yarn. You pull through the two. And you pull through the loop that was already on your hook. Easy peasy. Okay, so that's taught you about working into corners. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do one more round in this green to teach you about working into the gaps and then we'll start changing colours. Easy peasy. Oh, that was a book falling over. Okay, so what do we do? We turn our work, and then like I said, you can just go in straight away chaining three, but I like to slip stitch into the next gap that I'm working on. If you can't remember if you've turned your work or not, there should always be a gap next to where you're working. So if I hadn't turned my work, the nearest gap's all the way over here. So that doesn't make sense, but when I've turned my work, the gap's right here. So I know I've turned it. Okay, so I have slip stitched into the gap, then we chain three. Now this is a gap, it's not a corner, it's just a, it's just a gap. So again, because we're on our first one, we only chain two. Oh sorry, double crochet two. And you see, we've got a little block there. Now we chain two, because we're travelling over this block. And then we do three double crochets, three chains, and then three double crochets again. And you ask why? Because we're at a corner. So as you work through the pattern, 
you will see that obviously you only keep four corners because it's a square but you get lots and lots of uh, m middle blocks basically so yeah so you've just done your corner now you need to travel over this block here so you're going in there so it's chain two and then into this block here so you've chained two and now you're going to double crochet three because whenever you're doing a double crochet it's always three apart from when you first one of the round in which case it's two again so you've done the three you chain two because you're moving over this you go through and you do three chain three and then three double crochets again because you're on a corner so you can see this round is kind of coming together a bit I hope that's on focus on the table there you go so I'm just going to finish this round um, and then we'll get into, um, into change of colours Now you will know that you finished this round because there's nowhere else for you to go. So what you need to do, you've just finished that last corner, so you need to chain three, oh sorry, chain two, and then again, at that first one, you put you, that first chain three, you go to the top of the chain, slip your hook through, do a slip stitch, okay, and now you're going to do something called tying off. So all you really do is you, as if you're chaining, you pull it through, you pull it tight, then you grab some scissors, snip, leave yourself probably about two or three inches. Uh, I'm not leaving myself enough there really, but there you go. Because you'll need it to leave in later. You pull it tight, done. Okay? So now we're going to get into changing colours. Let me just find another colour. Okay, so another Stylecraft Special, we'll be using this. It's Storm Blue Stylecraft Special DK. Um, I've been using that for a blanket recently, so it was just a ball that I had left over. So what we're going to do is you're going to get your work and get your wool, and this is basically a finished object now. Like we're going to add to it, but you could use that as a coaster. Just keep going, keep going that colour forever. This also works if you get to the end of your uh, round and think, oh, I've not got enough wool to do one more round. You can you can change your wool at this point. You don't necessarily have to change the colour. You can just change the wool. Uh, what I'll also do probably next week is show you about changing colours mid row or changing wool mid row as well. Okay. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna. I like to work into the gap that I've just finished. Um. So it, it's up to you though. So I push my hook through the gap, not through any stitches, I get my yarn with the tail over here, probably want about that much, and then it's on my hook, you see, and I pull it through, so I've got one side here, oh, make sure you hold your tail tight, otherwise that happens, so you've got both pieces here, and then a loop here, and you do chain one, and pull it quite tight with both pieces, then just let your tail hang loose, and chain two and what's that oh it's your first round of your new level easy peasy you've got your new color on absolutely fantastic so i'll just show you what i also like to do is you can see obviously this this is here left over from before just push that to the back you can sew that in later there's no there's no need to worry about that right now so We've done our first block of two because obviously the first chain three counted as a double crochet. So now we chain two because what's next is another block. So we go into there and we double crochet three. If I could do it. One, two, because we're travelling. And then we're going into a corner this time. So you do three double crochets chain three and then three double crochets again 
So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this round. I'll show you the finished result. Um, and then we'll sign off. You may notice that I'm struggling a little bit, it's actually because this is a bigger hook than what I'm used to. When I use double knit, I usually use 4mm, but I'm using a 5mm um, just so that yours at home will look similar to what I'm doing now because you're obviously, you're going to be a lot looser with your tension because you're only learning. Um, so that's why I've used a bigger hook so that I'll be a bit looser. Um, thus, why I'm struggling a little bit. Because my tension is quite tight and that's quite hard to do on a hook that is too big for the wool. So I'm not usually as bad, I promise. But it goes to show that even someone who's been doing it for years can mess up sometimes. So that's that's good to know for you guys because I mess up all the time. So much. Um, yeah, so I think once we finish this round it'll be a nice size maybe for a coaster, you can go and you can starch it. I think what I'll also do is I might get my mum to do a sort of a little picture t tutorial of sewing in ends as well, because I don't sew in my own ends. I'm really lazy, I get my mum to do it. So I make huge blankets um, and just leave all the ends for my mum to do. And then it takes her a couple of weeks and then she returns them to me all lovely with a nice label on, because apparently she likes doing it. So then, okay, so we've just finished our last corner, and then we're going to chain two, because we're getting back over here. We go to that first chain three, we go through the front loops of the V, we pull it back, and we do a slip stitch. And again, because we're going to cut off now, we chain, but pull it really tight, leave two or three inches, and snip, and then just pull your hook. And there we have a cute little granny square. So you can just continue these out forever, or you can make loads of them all the same size, and I'll teach you joining techniques. It's completely up to you. What I'll try and do is put a couple of photos on of things that I have made with granny squares. Is that in progress? There we go. So I will try and do that for you. So thank you very, very much for watching. Jeffrey and Flop's most recent video and hopefully they're going to be a little bit more regular now that I've actually got Cecil's in my house. Thanks very much. Bye.